Well, Mary, we've got so much here to start with. Yes. You know, I love and have always been fascinated by natural plant dyes. And when you and I talked about coming on the show and, and sharing what you do, I had no idea we'd be bringing a full picnic as well as half of the grocery store. So please yes. explain to us about this wonderful array of opportunity here. Well, actually, plant dyes are, you can use your scrap vegetables, mm -hmm. like your onion skins and your old berries that are overripe. You mash them, your carrots. We make all our natural dyes out of vegetables. Interesting. Yes. So what color do you get from onions? Onion would be yellow. Okay. And also, this dye is made with onion and carrot and some turmeric. And it's a rich yellow. It's a rich yellow. Wonderful. And it come, and it comes right, it, it's just, if you take your time, creating the dye. It's gorgeous. What a beautiful yellow. And if I were to add some red cabbage, I could turn that orange. Interesting. Yeah. So some of the other things that create colors here, you know, we've got celery. Is that green? The or? celery leaves, yes. Okay. And, and how about the, the fennel? Fennel fronds, Interesting. yes. But the butternut squash? Okay, so if you cut the butternut squash, you're going to use the membrane and the seed, and it is an, a rich orange. Lovely. Yes. I would expect the cabbage to be red. It is red, and it is very deep red. It is. Yes, this, this has red cabbage and berry and red onion skin. Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. Yes. That's a lovely color. And I know from personal experience, when my very middle-aged daughter now was very young, <laughs> she ended up with pink all over her clothes when we went strawberry picking. So we've got pink from strawberries. You do. And yes. And but the coffee and the tea? Okay, so the coffee and the tea are, they're very easy to dye with because they have their own tannins. Okay. So coffee is a beautiful, it can be as deep as you want it to be. And it turns into a beautiful tan and brown. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. I would expect it to be darker. It could be darker if I made the coffee darker and the longer I let the wool stay in the coffee, it'll get darker. Interesting. Yeah, of course. And we all know black walnuts. Yes. Make us all very dark. Very dark. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the hulls. Yeah. But the herbs kind of throw me. Do they have different colors? They do. All Herbs have different colors. Mostly a lot of green uh -huh. in the leaves and it's how you prepare them. You know, you have to, you have to use, um, take your time making your dye bath so that you get, you extract as much pigment from them as you can. So you get as deep of a color as, as possible? As deep of a color, yeah. Interesting. Well, that's very interesting. Well, speaking of the dye bath, what is that process and how long does it take? You know, what are the steps to changing this to the dyes in the jar. Okay, so there's five easy steps to d natural dyeing. Okay. Okay, so you first want to take, I chose roving. This is the stage of wool before it's spun into yarn. Okay. So I, you want to put your roving in a cool bath so that it absorbs all the water. Um, you use a mordant, which I normally use white vinegar, but you can use alum or salt those are all non-toxic. And what will they do? They absorb what more they water? What they do is they help the pigment adhere to the wool. Okay, so a binder. So, right. Okay. So you would use like a cup of white vinegar to a gallon of water and submerge your water, your, your wool overnight. Uh -huh. And the um, platelets in the wool and the fibers will loosen up. Interesting. And after you're done with that, you squeeze your excess water out. Mm -hmm and you take your roving mm -hmm. or your yarn or your cloth right and you put it into i'm putting it into a prepared dye bath and what's in that pot okay so what is in this pot is water uh-huh about a gallon of water mm -hmm. i put my vegetables in my i put some rose petals and some um, camellia flowers and some red cabbage and some berries and cherries. Interesting. Yeah. And I, you bring it to a rapid boil for about 45 minutes until you extract most of your color. Most of the pigments. And then you turn it down uh -huh. and let it simmer for several hours. Sounds and like really soup. make that rich. <laughs> it can. And the 
the ones with the Tamarix smell wonderful. Oh, wonderful. And so you, you let this simmer for about two hours or longer. I've let it simmer overnight if I wanted a really dark color. So it just keeps pulling out it more just and keeps more of the pulling pigments. and pulling and it's your decision when you're ready to you want to make sure that your wool is free flowing uh -huh. so that you get no blotchiness and it's very even colored okay and um, when you're done you can see it's already starting yes oh my gracious yeah it's so, a beautiful color Pull yeah that back up one more time I want to see it again Wow the way it's just grabbing in on that it's color. It's just grabbing in and it's absorbing it and it's attaching all the pigment to all the fibers. Wonderful. So we've, we've boiled and boiled and what's and our we've next We've boiled step? and boiled. Okay, so after we're done and we decide, then we want to color fast. Right. So I take my wool mm -hmm. and I pour it right into the sink. So the thing you have to be very careful about not to felt the wool. So as long as the wool in the dye bath are the same color to start with, you can raise the temperature. Okay. Then when you bring it over to the um, color fasting stage, you want to make sure the wool and the water you're using to wash your wool are the same level. Okay. Because wool felts when it's shocked from hot to cold or too agitated. Interesting. So you want to be somewhat gentle. Yes. So basically when I put it into the sink and I use a natural soap, we wash the wool not agitating it, basically just rinsing it out and getting all the color that's excess that's going to bleed out. Okay. Out. Mm -hmm. And then you basically take it out to dry in the sunlight. Nice. You can dry it inside, and, but just make sure there's enough free flowing air so that all the fibers dry. Interesting. So they, they dry evenly too and you yes. don't have any wet mats. You don't have any wet mats and you don't have anything like, you know, fungus or mold or anything. Interesting. So from there, you then, you've got from your there, products over here. Yes. Okay, so we make felted animals, and these, these are all dyed by us. Mm -hmm. And then our wool, this is actually, we um, dyed it with a little bit of extra wine, uh -huh. red wine, that Funny. was left in the back of the cabinet <laughs> no one was going to drink. Right. So that was only about two cups of red wine. This is coffee. Uh, interesting. Yeah, and this yeah. is uh, um, uh, several different types of things like marigold leaves and red, on, um, yellow onion skins and and things like what that. What a beautiful Termic. yellow color. Yeah. Oh, they're so beautiful. And I love the vibrant colors on your felted animals. It's such a joy. Mary, this is so interesting to know that we can take fruits and vegetables from the grocery store. We can take products that are in our cabinets and even in our gardens and even our herbs and with some simple steps, you know, we too can create some dye and oh, learn to can. play with it and learn to, yes. to I'll say, uh, mix and match and see what we enjoy. And it's, it's solved an interest of mine, you kind of a curiosity, I should call it, of mine. And I just thank you so much for bringing all of this here to share with us. Well, you're very welcome and thank you for having us. Oh, absolutely.